everyone and welcome back to my channel. My name is Brenna Jean, a future doctor, and today I'm going to be telling you about how I got my first ever college 4.0 while I was taking 20 credit hours. <laughs> okay, I'll go through the classes I was actually taking because I know that can kind of impact difficulty. I'll walk you through what a typical day looked like for me during that semester. And then I'll run through a few tips and tricks that I used to help make sure that my GPA was the best possible. All right, let's get started. <laughs> context, this semester was my last semester of college, so second semester of my senior year. Let's dive into the classes I was taking. I have my transcript up here, um, and I'm just going to read these off for you so you can kind of understand what the spread of that 20 credits looked like. Three of those credits was actually a TA position, so I was teaching for an introductory biology course. I was teaching two labs a week um, and also helping students on the side. I was in three credits of hydraulics. This is a civil engineering course focused on fluid mechanics, specifically with water. So things like water pressure, water flow, turbulence, stuff like that. Yes, I know, very important for a doctor, right? Actually, actually it is because it does relate to things like blood flow in vessels or any sort of fluid flow in the body. It's just hydraulics is that on a much bigger scale. I was taking a three credit hour biochemistry course. I was in a three credit hour English class for writing for health and human sciences. And this was to complete my English credit for pre-med. So I had taken an English class my freshman year and this was finishing up that credit. And it was a lot of things like practicing writing your personal statement, doing public health research, um, writing soap notes and other like health science related writing. I had a two credit hour course in EPICS, which is engineering projects in the community. So it's a um, very specific to Purdue. It's a type of engineering course you can take to complete just basic general engineering credits and also give back. So in this case, we were doing a project for uh, Bradford Woods and we were developing a product that they could use within one of their like visual learning centers, um, specifically for kids with disabilities. I was in a three credit hour statistics course which is pretty self-explanatory. And then finally, I was in a three credit hour course for my senior design project. So for any of you who are familiar with engineering, you know that every single engineer has a senior design project that they complete. So that course was focused all around, like you pick someone in the community to build a product or service for, and then you build that product or service and deliver it to them in some way. So ours, we were working with Food Finders Food Bank um, and doing a project for them. I was in a lot of classes and it's not even like a bunch of them were big, like it was a bunch of small classes. So the hardest part about this semester was really context switching. I was always flipping in between completely different topics from biochemistry to hydraulics, to writing, to design. I was just constantly flip-flopping between all of those and um, on it, yeah, that was the hardest part. All right, so a typical day in the life, I was able to find a um, kind of snapshot of my calendar from some random week during that semester. So this hopefully will give you an idea of what an average week looked like for me. What I will say is that I think this snapshot that in particular that I'm showing you, it doesn't have a lot of my extracurricular commitments on there. So things like being on a leadership board for College Mentors for Kids, being on the leadership board for Purduettes, um, and then obviously there's an exam on there, but there was a bunch of other things I was doing outside of class as well. Um, and in other weeks it like shows those a bit more, but it also has like people's names on them. And I just don't want to like share that on the public internet. So this is a pretty average standard week that I'm showing you. Now, despite having classes at different times, I always woke up at the exact same time. So I always woke up at, oh my God, don't cry, 5.30, yes, 5.30. But that's just because one, it takes forever for me to do things in the morning. Like you could ask Sam today, I still get up at like 5.30 or six every single morning, depending on if I have to shower, because I like that consistency uh, and routine building. No matter 
when my first class was, I always woke up at the same time and I either went immediately to class once I was ready to go, or I would spend a few hours studying or doing homework. Um, and that was really important to me because I was really bad at like doing things in short amounts of time. So if I only had like a 30 minute break in between classes, that's super unproductive for me. And I typically can't get work done in that time period. I need at least a solid hour to be able to get good work done. So having that time every few mornings to do that was really helpful. I attended every single one of my classes. I never skipped. I never watched recordings of it. I always attended class and that's just because it was really helpful for me to be there and to be taking notes and asking questions in real time. And then I would always go back and typically rewrite notes or um, rewrite down important parts of slides again later, but being in class was very important to me. And like also you're paying for those classes. So like you should probably go. So I think you'll see on this calendar that I actually have some office hours listed and I would always put office, like schedule out the block for when I wanted to go to office hours if I was having a particularly difficult time with an assignment and that's just because I wanted to make sure that it was prioritized in my schedule. So if I was ever going to office hours during the week, I would like block it out on my calendar. For me, office hours became so important during my later years in college. I like never used them my freshman and sophomore years. And honestly, that was the one of the biggest mistakes that I ever made is not going to office hours. Seriously, whether it's the TA or the actual professor, going into office hours is so helpful. They typically end up giving you the answer at some point or another, but they also help you understand how to work through the problem so that when you see problems like that in the future, you know how to solve it. So whether that's a specific chemical equation or it's a math problem or a hydraulics problem, I always went to office hours for hydraulics because I always needed help and I guarantee you that's the only reason I got an A in that class is because I went to office hours. So I know people say it all the time, like your mentors, your professors might say it and maybe you don't believe them or maybe you're just not prioritizing time, but go to office hours. It's going to help you out so much. I promise. I promise. And if it's not, you can come back, comment on this video and tell me that it didn't, but I guarantee you it's going to help. For me, classes, as you can see, typically ended either at 4.30 or 5.30, and I wasn't in Christmas show at this time, which is a whole nother story. So once that time hit, I was pretty much free to do whatever I wanted for the rest of the evening. So um, Sam and I would always grab dinner, watch an episode of like The Office or something short, and then head to work. Um, and that was like studying work, not like work, work. I did not work that semester. Um, and so basically the rest of the evening was mine to spend for studying, testing, etc. Now my weekends, you probably won't see much on those either. And that's because those were always spent studying unless there was some special event that I had to go to or friends hanging out and I had time. It was always like wake up at a reasonable hour, eat breakfast, and then just start working. Either go to the library, stay at home, whatever, but get to work. Now, I, I'll, I'll say this next tip with a bit of a caveat. I didn't really study in groups unless it was people that I knew I could be productive around. So I had a pretty close knit group of about two or three people that I knew if I was with, I could study around. I knew we could always be productive around each other. But um, it's still useful to utilize the knowledge of a group. So take my biochemistry class, for instance. We had these problem sets and sometimes it was really difficult to find some of the research for some of the questions or um, you just wanted to see what other people were saying to see if you like missed a concept. So we had a group chat going with people in the biochemistry group and if we ever had questions or wanted to share some cool articles, we could do that. And that really helped with those assignments um, just in getting them done a bit faster and understanding what the question was asking easier. Something I did a lot was try to mix up my study environment. Um, I typically had three places that you would find me on campus, either in my room. Um, I shared a house with five other people and it was really close to campus, which I loved. And it was big enough for me to have my bed and my desk and everything in there. Um, and it was kind of in the back of the house, so it was a bit secluded, which was nice. Although if there are any parties going on next door or if people were, you know, hanging out in the room watching RuPaul's Drag Race, like 
not as productive, which is why I had other study environments that I could go to. So whenever I couldn't be like in my room, then I was typically uh, one of two places on campus. I was either in our active learning center um, or one of the other libraries. And the active learning center was great because it had what we call the reading room. And it's basically like quiet. Like you're not allowed to talk in there. You're not allowed to make loud noises or play music or anything. Like you go in there, you sit at the little desk and you're just like, doing your work, you know, and it's silent. And I love that. That was really helpful to me when I needed to write or work on some like more engineering problem sets where there was lots of math and stuff. So I really liked that. Alternatively, if I was trying to study for something, which meant I was working through problem sets over and over again, then I love to go to rooms with dry erase boards. And then I wrote out my problems on the dry erase boards. That was really helpful because I could be a little bit more intentional um, with my writing. I could take a step back and look at the big picture and not have it be like tiny writing on a little piece of paper. Um, and typically if you're working with other people, then they can add in their opinions too while you're writing on the board because it's easier for everyone to see. A really big thing that I started doing more of my senior year and I know that I'm gonna have to work hard at once I start med school this summer is testing myself. I know testing isn't fun, obviously like nobody likes taking tests, but testing yourself can be a great way to make sure that you know the material. So for me, what that looks like is before exams, there would typically be practice exams available for you to reference. And I would try and work through those practice exams as if I was actually taking an exam. And if I didn't know the answer or I needed help, then I would spend time right there to research what the answer was. And then I would try the problem set or the question again to make sure that I had learned the material. So testing yourself is really, really helpful. And if your class doesn't have like practice exams available, then use previous homework problems or lab quizzes or stuff like that, because the content will still be there. It's just, it might not be like a dedicated practice exam. My senior year was mostly spent studying. I'm not gonna lie. It was spent studying and doing the things that I had to do for the other organizations that I was a part of. So going to meetings, like performing, um, going to volunteering events. Like I did the things that I had to do outside of academics, but I didn't really do much besides that and academics. And that sucked. I mean, a lot of my friends, they would go out to bars or they would have movie nights or just like hang out, go to lunch together. And yeah, I just, I didn't do a lot of that my senior year because I didn't think I had time. It wasn't to be prioritized as high as my academics. And yeah, it sucked. It sucked a bunch, especially seeing other people get closer and me just feeling a little bit more secluded every day. Um, but at the same time, like your real friends are gonna stay true to you no matter what. So if you're going through a time where Say you're having, you're really struggling in a class and you really need to buckle down and study and all your friends are like going and hanging out and you really want to join them. If they're really your friends, they'll understand, you know, the minute that you're done studying with that class or, you know, when, if it comes to next semester and you have an easier semester, your real friends are going to let you back in no problem. And that's definitely what I found is the people who are really my friends have really opened open back up to me and, and to letting me hang out. And um, anyway, I'm just rambling, but the fact of the matter is you're going to have to give something up. For me, it was a little bit of social life and I prioritized sleep, I prioritized academics and it paid off in my GPA. Um, did I feel a bit secluded? Yes, but my priority at the time was not building those relationships, it was building my GPA and that's what I did. Now, that being said, as far as the, you know, giving things up, everything in moderation, right? Like I still went to a friend's bachelorette party. I still went on nice dates with Samuel. I still did fun stuff and like went to a movie every so often with my friends. You just have to, to balance it, really. Like if I was having a really productive Friday evening, let's say, that doesn't happen very often, but I was having a productive Friday evening and I knew my friends were going out to a movie Saturday night. 
then that movie was going to be my reward. I would kind of build a list for myself of all the things that I wanted to get done. And as long as I finished that list or got most of the way done with that list, then I used the movie as kind of my reward and my break time. Adding frequent breaks to your study schedule is actually very helpful. So whether that's what Sam and I did and we like took a break in between classes and studying to get dinner and like hang out and watch TV. Or if it's, you know, you've been studying for three hours, take a break and watch a YouTube video or two and then get back to studying. Um, definitely do that because it'll make you more productive as if you are giving yourself breaks and giving your brain a time to just like relax. <laughs> Look, it's not going to be easy. If your focus is to get a really good GPA, it's going to be hard work. You're going to have to study really hard. You're going to need to do really well on your exams, on your homework assignments, take any extra credit opportunity you can. And some days you're going to feel like you're failing. You might cry a little bit. You might freak out. You might get angry. I don't know how you react to stress. I just cry a crap ton. Um, so there were definitely a lot of days where I just like broke down crying because I was so stressed and so freaked out that I wasn't going to make it. But then there's equally the, just as many days where you feel on top of the world because you've got this great assignment done. You got an amazing grade on a test. If you're working hard and you have that grit and determination to get through the courses and the assignments that you need to do, it's going to pay off in the end. I promise. I promise. All right, that's all I have for today. If you liked what you saw today, please like this video and of course subscribe to my channel to see more just like it. And if you're not following me on Instagram, it's at Brenna Future Doc, and I'd love to see you there. Feel free to DM me, comment below if you have any ideas on more things that you'd like to see from me on these videos. And um, yeah, that's it. So have a good day and I'll see you next time. Bye.